In today's world, anything you can think of is just a click away. It's created an uncertain future for many brick and mortar stores. It's just a very real experience that you don't get through the efficiency of, of online. So how can shops survive in the age of online retail? This week, we're in Atlanta. This city is considered one of the best places to start a business. We're looking at the current climate of work across America, how people are landing jobs and thriving. Step into our office. This is The Race. Welcome to The Race, I'm Chris Stewart. The future of small business is never set in stone. Here in Atlanta, the rise of internet giants almost led to a local bookstore's final chapter. But instead, in the face of struggle, they flipped the script. I think they're beautiful, I love holding them, I love looking at them. All of the creativity that goes into designing them and how they look in the room and how they make you feel when you're around them. I just, there's really nothing I don't love about books. The success of the titles, authors, and tales on the shelves of this shop are a big part of the twists and turns in the story of Frank Reese's small business. I opened Acapella in 1989. In the beginning, he focused on books that were hard to find. Used books, kind of ordinary used books, as well as more scarce and rare books. Then. When Amazon showed up, books became pretty available. Anybody with a computer could find a book anywhere. So a lot of our inventory that had been kind of scarce out of print, 15 to 25, 35, and $100 books became pretty common and became $5 and $10 books, and it became hard to make a living selling those. To keep his business, his job, alive, Frank had to climb into a hole. To hang on, I just started accumulating debt. Probably 15 years ago, I think I had gotten like a quarter of a million dollars in debt. Then, the plot twist that changed Frank Reese's store, offering what the internet couldn't. Where you could really capture an audience for books was when you could bring the authors to town, to your store, and give their fans the opportunity to meet them, get a book signed. We brought in Harry Belafonte and Tom Brokaw, really major celebrities, really, and, and we'd get hundreds of people come out and buy their books. He also started selling newer books and moved to a cheaper location. Or probably six times the revenue that we had at its low point. Independent bookstores saw an increase in sales at the end of last decade, showing that even though e-commerce can be king. I just think that you can open a book and just, they can take you anywhere. For the characters with a more personal touch, the end hasn't been written. There's a push to get more small business loans in rural parts of America, and Alicia Nieves found how that money can make a difference for an entire community. In New York's capital region, 20 minutes north of the state capitol building, is Tech Valley Office Interiors. It's harder and harder situation every day. Ron Dion has owned this small business for 15 years. It's been quite a ride. We opened up and were very successful our first three years. Then the Great Recession hit, and we had four or five years we'd prefer not to look back at. And ever since then, it has been a steady rise again. Like many small businesses in America, Tech Valley has enjoyed growth in its economy. But with the upside has come a downside of a tight labor market. Before, I could just put an ad up and I would have 50 resumes and have a person within a day or two. Now, I can go 30 days and I'll get two or three resumes and they're not even qualified for the position. So it's, it's a much harder process. Tech Valley is part of the 88% of small businesses across the country reporting struggling to hire qualified workers in a labor market where there are just more available jobs than people looking for work. Tech Valley is trying to hire at least two full-time positions, but knows in order to do so, it has to be competitive. We're paying a lot more than we were in the past. We're probably be paying near $10,000 per employee as a starting salary from where we were 10 years ago. 
but then we're doing creative things. Where we have a great compensation package with bonuses and what have you. But more importantly, we've taken the extra step on um, when we find the right employee and we want them to be part of our team, we will start helping to pay off their college tuition. What are the consequences of not being able to hire the staff that you need or additional staff for a business like yours? The only way a business like mine is going to grow is to be able to grow my staff. So if I can't grow my staff, we're not going to grow as a whole. Stunted growth in any business could eventually lead to loss of business, an even bigger problem very difficult right now. There's more of a strain going on than I think people realize. But in many ways, there's been positives out of it. As we've spoken about, salaries have gone up. The market has caused that. You know, a business understands what they have to do to respond to their needs. For The Race, I'm Alicia Nieves. Technology is changing, what jobs are in demand, and which jobs pay the best. Annie Taylor taking a look at what jobs are growing and dying the fastest. Chris, we teamed up with PolitiFact for this one, and they found that half of the 20 fastest growing jobs were in healthcare and renewable energy. Check out these five jobs the Bureau of Labor Statistics expects to grow the fastest through 2028. Renewable energy and healthcare dominate the top five, with occupational therapy assistants also making the list. Experts told PolitiFact the aging baby boomer population will help boost demand for healthcare and long-term care workers, and that climate concerns will fuel renewable energy growth. Solar and wind are expected to expand, while coal mining will keep declining. Here's the BLS list of jobs it projects will shrink most by 2028. They include jobs in industries known as legacy sectors. Automation is expected to shift job demand and reduce jobs in aircraft and vehicle assembly. Pay is also important. BLS says the 20 fastest growing jobs pay more on average than the 20 at the bottom of the list. Now, the Brookings Institute did have a warning about these listings. It says that it doesn't consider whether an industry employs an older worker who's soon to retire, creating a higher demand for new workers. I'm Annie Taylor for The Race. In a rural part of America known for coal mining, younger generations are learning about renewable energy. And Elizabeth Ruiz is taking a look at how solar training could give them a leg up. On the western slope of Colorado, like many other communities across the country, sits a county where coal mining has employed thousands of people for the past century. But in the past decade, multiple mines have shut down. Matosh Pena is an engineering manager with Delta Montrose Electric Association, a rural not-for-profit cooperative. He says coal energy production isn't cost competitive anymore. A lot of times they have to take this coal and rail it out on trains and get it to wherever it's going somehow. That's not as economical as it used to be. Coal's advantage was it was cheap. It might be a little dirty, but it was cheap. Um, but now, coal's not as cheap. The loss of employment and training opportunities hit the community hard. If we're generating 1,000 watts here. Science teacher Ben Graves says for generations, coal mines were the primary trade pathway for students in the area. When the mine shut down, many families packed their bags to find opportunity elsewhere but others are embracing the change. There is definitely a national trend in wanting to engage students in more project-based learning that's authentic, that's not just, hey, let's do a project for the sake of learning a concept, but let's actually address a problem in our community or school. As the coal industry continues to decline, renewable energy is rapidly growing. It's an emerging industry right now, and it's going to continue to be more and more prevalent. Which means students now have the chance to play a role in a different type of energy production. These students at Delta High School are part of a solar energy training program led by Graves. I feel so short. In addition to teaching students about general renewable energy work, they're learning how to install, design, and maintain solar arrays through hands-on experience. And at the end of the class, they get a vocational certificate as a solar electric installer. Everybody knows math and, you know, English, but like this is a trade skill that we are one step further knowing than most people. Hannah Philman and her classmate Xavier Beatty both have family that have worked in the coal mines. Even though his grandfather died from a lung disease caused by long-term exposure to coal dust, Xavier says he thought he wanted to continue his family's coal mining legacy. But then he was forced to try the solar program. Even though I didn't want to be in it, I love the fact that I'm still in it because it teaches me about things that I would have never known about. I would have probably went off to mines and 
ended up like my grandpa, so. Now Xavier says he could see himself working in the renewable energy sector. Both he and Hannah say they love the collaborative nature of the solar program and the hands-on work outside. Go slow. Thank you. Graves is now designing a program that other schools across the nation can use. You can use your handy voltage drop calculator. As the renewable energy industry grows, the goal is to provide a workforce ready to support it. As economies change, rather than being reactive, um, it's more it's being proactive. I think it's something that a lot of people hope to do, and I'm hoping we're being proactive in the right way. <laughs> Wyatt, good to see you, buddy. For The Race, I'm Elizabeth Ruiz reporting. Well, you can call them the instant gratification generation. Younger Americans are switching jobs more often than others. Coming up, we're going to take a look at why and what companies are doing about it.